When trout are aggressively taking back swimmers in the surface film, you want a fly pattern that they can see and you can see. I think I got something that might be of interest. Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my fly tying bench. You know, there are a few things as exciting as when fish are aggressively taking back swimmers at the surface. Back swimmers are going to be hanging on an angle with the tip of their abdomen, poking through the water, drawing in that much needed air these air breathing insects need to survive underwater. But you need a pattern that not only imitates this angle that they suspend at, but also is visible to you so when you get a grab, you know it and you can set the hook. My suspender back swimmer has proven to be money in these situations. So let's tie the suspender back swimmer. I'm going to tie this on a Daiichi 1550 number 10. And for my tying thread, I'm going to use Semperfly Classic Waxed 80 in Pale Olive. Olive thread would be good. You could even use red thread if you wanted really doesn't show much on the finished fly. So we're going to get our thread wrap, or our basic wrap, all the way down the shank. Like so, right before it falls off. And for the suspender post, we're going to use some 5 millimeter booby cord. You could use 7 millimeter as well in white just so it's nice and visible because you get to see this the fish doesn't we're going to come in with our scissors and trim this on about a 45 degree angle one cut like so and then i'm going to bring my tying thread back up to about the midpoint tie it in by that trimmed point and using open wraps just work the thread back right till it falls off the bend and then use sort of a series of compression wraps to get that locked in. Don't try and bind this down with your heaviest wraps right away because you'll probably either A, slice the foam, or B, more likely, break your tying thread. So just build it up and compress the foam gradually by just going back and forth over the top and eventually compressing the foam. Okay, so now we're going to trim this, and we want our foam post about the same length as the shank it's not super critical but that's the basic proportions you can trim this on the water if it's a bit too long whatever but this sticks right up out of the water now normally i would just rotate the vise but to keep everything in frame i'm going to take the hook and turn it upside down because as this fly's name suggests it's a back swimmer so they swim on their backs next step is we're going to tie in a little black stripe that goes down the shell back to suggest the seam of the folded wings of the back swimmer. So we're using some black sulky thread. You could use black flashaboo as well. For years I used to use a black fine point marker to make that seam and I still was never happy. Uh, the, to me the seam was just too wide. This is much easier to do, less drawing and actually looks better because it's much narrower. So we're just going to walk this right back to the base of that post and to avoid hitting the, the hook point I'm just going to take the barrel of the bobbin and roll it around the shank like so. That'll keep it out of the way and I want to make sure that that's right down the middle of the hook so when I pull it over the back it's going to be right down the middle of the shell back too. Now for the shell back I just need something white so I'm going to use razor foam in opaque white. This is 0.5 millimeter. It's not really for its buoyancy, it's more for its color to suggest the white back of the natural back swimmer. We're getting our buoyancy, in this case, from the foam post. So I've trimmed a slip from the sheet that's no wider than the hook gape. Even slightly narrower would be better. And then I'm going to trim one end of that slip into the point like a picket from a picket fence, like so. And we're just going to tie that in place by that point 
and just walk it back open wraps just like we did the foam post and then walk this right back again by just taking our bod our bobbin and rolling the tip of it right around the shank don't allow it to get anywhere near the hook point making sure you're going back far enough so you can do a little test pull over and make sure that there's no that looks pretty good there's no gap between and then come forward and just like we did with the foam post go back and forth a few times just to further compress that foam in and make sure it's in there good and tight and I'm going to go right up and just cover the hook shank with thread right to the eye of the hook. I'm going to come back to the midpoint, tie in my legs. For the legs, I'm going to use some speckled sexy floss in olive. I'm going to take a single strand that's nice and straight, it's got no curl in it or very little. And I'm going to hold that length right at the midpoint and taking my tying thread over the top towards the front on the far side just a couple of wraps like that and that's got that front leg this leg here closest to me positioned in the 45 degree angle I want so I'll go over a couple more wraps one on top of each other to further secure it then I'll take a couple of thread wraps to isolate those wraps then I'm going to work on positioning the far side leg. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to work that thread back right up to the against the legs. And then I'm going to go over the top, over the back side, and over to the far side towards the bend. At least that's the plan. So I'm going to hold that leg. Manipulate it, come up, over the top, and towards the back. So what I've done, I've come up, in front, over the top, and to behind the leg. And now I've got both of those legs sitting in a nice 45. I can put a few other wraps in here, and I can come up and even put some wraps in. So the goal is, is you know, manipulate your thread wraps as best you can to get those... Um, to get those legs positioned how you want them, which is swept forward. So again, I'm not happy with that far side, so I'm going to repeat it again until I am. And just walk it forward one wrap at a time. Doesn't have to be perfect, but a natural back swimmer, when it's at rest, has its legs swept forward because as a predator, its first kick is going to grab water and push it towards its prey. All right, for the body, we're going to use some of the Semperfly Straggle String in dark green olive. Really a good color match for the back swimmers that I've seen, especially those in my local waters. So we're going to tie this in right behind the legs. Secure that down right to the base. Come back up. Being careful not to knock my legs out of position. And leave your spelt. You see I've got that thread hanging about a hook eye, the length of the hook eye back. We don't want to crowd the head here. So now we're just going to come forward and form our body by winding the straggle string forward in close touching turns. Be careful not to grab our legs. These legs just love to get in the way. And then I'm going to come up underneath and go directly in front of the legs, moving them as necessary to keep them in check and not to accidentally tie them down. And you can overlap the wraps in the front a little bit just to keep your body shape consistent. But again, do not crowd that hook eye. And carefully trim and now we're going to pull over our foam and come straight across if we can cinch it down with a couple of wraps but do not trim off that excess I'm going to fold that back over to form a little head but now we can take our sulky 
And again, I've pulled on it, get a couple of wraps to get it in place. And the goal is, is to make sure it comes right down the middle, which it does here. And once I'm happy with that, I can trim that off. And I'm going to take our foam, form a little head, being careful not to impede the hook eye. Our leg wants to get into the party a little too early. So that forms a little head, that, very representative of the natural back swimmer. And then I'm just going to pull on this and trim it away. And then hold those legs a little bit. A few extra wraps for luck. Grab our whip finisher. whip finish the tying portion is done so we'll take our legs trim them so they're about the shank length long or a little longer again they're still swept forward like the natural uh, that far side seems to be a little longer again not going to cause any major issues but looks to be good so now we're going to do some artwork. So we're going to color it the head, the eyes, and the shell back to look like the naturals. So we're going to do the lightest colors first. This is apple green Prisma color. You could also use a chartreuse sharpie. And we're just going to turn this just by dabbing more than anything. The head, because the head of a back swimmer is kind of this light olive green coloration. So we're going to come in. Hopefully this stays relatively in focus as I roll this around. It'll be nice and quick if it's not. Like so. We'll let that dry a little bit and get back to where we were. Just do that a few times. We'll let that dry. Then we're going to come in with the darker color, which is the black, and form the wine-like the wine glass like markings on their back so I'm just going to draw a line about a quarter of the way down and then being left-handed doesn't help with this near side but we'll do our best so I've got that distinct V and then I just fill it in and again just like I did with the the green I'm going to more dab than draw let the ink bleed like so and then I'm gonna they got a little markings down their side so I just put three suggestive black dots or stripes down there and then we're gonna put the distinct red eyes on by literally coming in with a red sharpie and touching it right on the corner like so Pull that down so you can see. And again, the fish aren't swimming up. They don't, they're just, just suggestive. So I got some nice red eyeballs on there, just like the natural. And you want to protect it and put a coating on it. And if you try using UV resins, it's not a good coating. So what works really well is clear Gorilla Glue. And you take it, a post-it note like this, and off camera, I'm just going to put a little drop of the Gorilla Glue on the post-it note. And then I'm going to use a cheap craft brush that I get at the uh, dollar store, because once you use the brush, it's toast. So I'm just going to get that leg out of the way, and I'm just going to come in and gently paint and color the head and that'll protect and yet won't flake off. The your UV resins will certainly dry on the foam but as soon as they, you give them any pressure and squeeze them it just pops right off. Whereas this works really well. I learned this trick from a friend of mine Dennis who uses it to coat bass poppers he likes to tie. He foils them, puts fingernail foils on them like that and you'll just set that aside to dry 
and your suspender back swimmer is complete. So I'm looking at that. I'm thinking my foam post is a bit long. So again, I've now got the body finished. I can transfer that and I'm probably just going to come in and nip it off. And that's the kind of adjustment you can do once the fly is done. I'm just going to quickly grab it by the post and put it back into the jaws of the vise. When these back swimmers suspend on the surface, they suspend with their white backs facing down to the bottom of the lake and that allows them to blend in with the surface glare and when you look at them from above, their dark olive body blends in with the sort of olive background of the lake, the lake water below. But this fly works really good when the fish are targeting back swimmers as they're sitting just on the surface. All you see with this fly sticking out is the foam post. The rest of it is hanging down on a nice little 45 degree angle, just like the naturals. Give it a try. It works really well.